Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of that, Nick Roush, Kentucky Sports Radio. First question, who do you think you are? Hmm. <laughs> I'm unfortunately somebody that's indebted to Cousin Shane, which is a place you never want to be in. And that was, of, I didn't know, I had no idea you were here until Rusty Manziel says, I heard you owe Cousin Shane a bottle of bourbon. I was like, damn it. He, does, everybody. he does not forget. And you know what? That, that's for Dallas. That's all right? right. I'll now, be there. I'm warning you, my wife is pregnant and the due date is near that. So I, I might, I Gosh. might, I'm. God, you'd do anything to get out of a bed, <laughs> wouldn't you? Especially the good for nothing Tennessee Vol, which my gosh, you all just drive me nuts. Oh, you, let's talk about nuts. How about that headline you put out the other day? What what is it with Tennessee that's just stuck in your crawl right now? So here's the thing is I part of it is just knowing that no matter how much I plea and try and like try to will it into existence is that Tennessee's just got Kentucky's number, and I have to admit it. Like, y'all kick our ass, and it sucks. <laughs> I hate it. It rips my heart and soul out every time it happens, and I, I just, I frankly, I can't bear it. But there is part of me that is fascinated by Josh Heupel, and that, and that's, I, I even softened it up like that. That article I wrote earlier this week, it's the nicest thing I've ever said. And essentially, Gerald Mincy, he starts his career at Florida, he transfers to Tennessee, starts 14 games over two years for the Vols, Josh Heupel, transfers to Kentucky. Great get for Kentucky. They needed offensive tackle. He started. He's been there. He, he knows the league. What I was fascinated by is he's been in the Josh Heupel offense. He was talking about just how much he's had to learn because – and Heupel's offense, like, it's one speed. We're going fast and we're going north-south. Right. But, you know, he's having to learn how to do outside zone, inside zone, play action pass. He was just talking about this pass rusher, and he's like, I mean, every other guy just tried to speed rush me around the outside because that was the only thing they could do. And I, I don't think it's necessarily a knock on Tennessee, but I was fascinated by it. And the other part of it is that, like, it really is fascinating that Josh Heupel, like, he is – mastered this I'm gonna do one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna do it so well j try to stop it good luck yeah. I mean and he even did it with Joe freaking Milton like that guy sucks like uh, you think he's good he's not like <laughs> he can throw the ball a mile he's really good athlete he can go east to west but like he went from a guy who he could, he could trust Hendon Hooker with his life to not I mean he he kept he kept things simple for Joe and they still won eight games. So I'm I wanted to dog Josh Heupel and call him a one trick pony, but there is part of me where I'm like, how do you how has nobody figured this out yet? Please somebody figure it out <laughs> so we can because he is, I mean he's he's kicking Kentucky's ass right now and so I I was that was the nicest I could be Shane. I was trying to <laughs> be nice it. but I can't. No, like, you keep going. I like it. I, but it's just like my heart is just so angry at me that my brain and my mouth are saying nice things about Tennessee. Josh Heupel sucks. There we go. That's better. I think that's a, the Mike Leach, may he rest in peace, influence on Heupel. Because that's that's kind of what Leach was. I mean, it was the same plays over and over and over, but his guys would just out-execute you. Well, and I, I think there's definitely something to the thing that Kentucky is reigning into with this offensive coordinator overhaul, yeah. Stoops likes the pro style system because it's it incorporates the run and he's Ohio Youngstown run the damn ball, you know, like it it's that salty kind of hard nosed blue collar thing, but the pro style the some guys they can't handle it between the ears. Yeah, I think yeah. that was a problem with Devin Leary, right? Like he could do the spread, but. You know, sometimes reading that wristband, it was tough because there was just a lot to it. So uh, that's something that I think you should commend Josh Hype on because a lot of, I think, what makes college coaches great, they're the ones who just let their players play and they go, they, they don't have to think a lot, right? Yeah. Like there's one or two things you go and do it. And that's something Kentucky struggled with. That's something Bush Hamden's had to, to really harp on in spring practice going into the fall. Um, it made some people mad too, Shane, because he told them to be boring golfers. Yeah. And like Kentucky fans are like, boring golfers, conservative soups. <laughs> ah! But there is like you, you, you want 
I, you want guys to be able to execute, right? Yeah. And that's something that Kentucky, they've been sloppy as hell. You know, the fake punt against Missouri, and then everything fell apart. Um, the Clemson game, you had a late pick. We threw a late pick against Louisville that kept them in the game. Uh, just the mistakes at the end of game situations. You clean up some of those dumb mistakes, and instead of seven and six back to back years, they might have been eight and four. You know, like it, it could be a completely different season. And in the new 16 team SEC, you can't. You can't make those little mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny because last year I, I, I kind of went on the ledge and I talked up Mizzou football and it came to fruition. So I, I'm going to bring it up in every interview, you know. Cause oh, I was yeah, because right, you, you know. were right that <laughs> one time. Yeah, yeah, that one time he but was I, right. But I will say this. Kentucky's my team this year. I don't know what it is. I, I'm feeling I know what it. it is. I, he hates it. But I, I, I <laughs> love the wide receiver room. I love the experience on the offensive line. I think the defense is underrated, similar to what Mizzou looked like last year. The coaching, questionable. That's yes. not one concern. And the fact that Brock has to take that monumental step in this program. So watching Leary, watching Will Levis, maybe not recently, but how, how would you feel about Brock coming into the system this year? Is, is, this, is this the dude? You're behind the scenes. You see Yeah, it. right, is right. He, is, is he going to be – serviceable this year and put Kentucky in a good situation to uh, upset some folks. He has a much higher floor than Devin Leary. Where Devin yeah. Leary was this high ceiling guy because we saw the production previously, but in particular, just the athleticism and being able to use the quarterback run, I mean, when you can just do a quarterback read, third and five, and yeah. pick up those pesky yards. So I, I think that part of it, yes. Um, and, and it's similar kind of to Brady Cook where, I mean, how many times did Brady Cook, Cook like, all right, it's not there, like I'll take off and I'll run for 11 yeah. yards and yeah. keep a drive alive. Where Kentucky, I think they were ninth or 10th and third down conversions last year. So I, I think the four is going to be higher for Brock. And the one thing I like about Brock too is he's got a real good head on his shoulders. Yeah. And that, that helps with this pro style system. I know Mike Bobo isn't going to be doing the same thing as Bush Hamden. It's a little bit different. Um, but He's been around high-level football. He's a coach's son. And there's not a whole lot of, like, he really that, – that environment, I think, is just kind of cultivated to where he's he's been put in a position to succeed, and he's got some good talent around him. So I, I, I think that that's there. And to your overall point, though, really this could be Kentucky's most talented team since 21. It's just you're going to Ole Miss, you're going to Texas, right. you, you got Tennessee at home. Um, or no, yeah, no, you go to Tennessee this yeah, year, Tennessee, right? Yeah. You go to Tennessee, you got Georgia as one of your home games. Like, yeah. you know, so the, the schedule, you're, you're a prisoner of your schedule. And that's where, like, you know, I think if they went eight and four this year, they might have been better than any of those nine and three teams. Absolutely. Um, but that blueprint is similar. It, that blueprint is similar. But that, that was another take. I made Missouri fans mad, Mike, because I pointed out to them that the, the Blake Baker factor. They, they're they're overlooking that way like that's a huge loss two starting cornerbacks to the NFL yeah like and then losing the the edge who's a first round pick Popper like Hopper is with the Packers now yeah, yeah who I mean he didn't lead him in tackles he was dealing with injury stuff but still like that's I, I think they have a great schedule so they'll probably they're at least eight and four right yeah. but that nine and a half win total it might be tempting even though that schedule is yeah you know yeah a little white <laughs> well, I think you're right because the it's it's already been bet down to nine, the, the over under for Mizzou. So people, hey, I, ma maybe Nick Roush was right for a change, <laughs> right? Maybe so. Get, Mark Stoops hate list. Let, let's rank these guys. Drink. Okay, drink. Heupel. Heupel. Beamer. How would you rank them? I still put well, Beamer, Mark Stoops rank Beamer them? one one. Especially after, they, they, how do you lose to South Carolina two years in a row? Yeah. I mean, they, they, all, they, Mark Stoops never beat Spencer Rattler. New Green, <laughs> Will Levis was injured one year, but like, they aren't that good. No, like, right. well, I, so yes, I, I, there, I go one one. I think Hypo might be two. Some of it might be just a family thing. Bob and Hypo don't get along, so Mark's got to take his brother's side. Um, but another part of it. That's if you have the biggest critique of the entire Mark Stoops era, it's his inability to consistently beat Tennessee. Like that's really the only yeah. mark against him. He's got two wins and eleven tries. Like that's 
You should have at least <laughs> twice as many, right? Like right. After that long, especially I mean, since Tennessee sucked during that for the vast majority of that oh, time. Oh yeah, like, there was a couple of those games, and you know, granted, you, a pick six, you get ta- when Bowen gets tackled on the inside, like you're right there for a lot of them. Uh, so that God, why are you 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 just keep <laughs> looking at me what? and you know just st- just stop it you and your face it's just your face you just gotta stop it Shane you need I'll, I'll a, a damn Tennessee <laughs> smirk I just oh we you beat him oh, 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 oh. my favorite was your breakdown in front of the stadium to this day is by far the best video to ever come out of Kentucky <laughs> And the worst part is, is it's going. I, I just, I, it's going to happen again. Damn it, baby, baby. I don't know. I, I well, let's let's kind of pivot this off. Well, I don't want to go off Coach Stoops yet because we had Billy Lucci on not too long ago. Tex Ag, love him, love him to death, just as much as I love you. But I want to kind of get your side of the story because we're the way it was presented to us is that he was out until. The right boosters called, the right people called, and then all of a sudden he was back in. So what, what did you – take us back to that day. How did you – when you first is the, heard – Is the, the steak story true with the steakhouse? Have you heard that one? Um, Apparently, like, right after they beat Louisville, and they were at a steakhouse well, celebrating. He was, he he was said, not there. He who, was in his basement who's celebrating coming with, with some people. Who's coming with me, basically? But there, so – that was a very stressful time because, you know, Mark Stoops there is not going to last forever, right? I caught wind of some serious traction on Thanksgiving Day, which is Thanksgiving Day. I don't want to be on the phone with a lot of people. Some people aren't answering their phones. Some people are. But it's it's not enough where I'm going to run with something just yet. And so I'm I'm, I'm just sweating. Like, do I do I say something? Do I, do I drop a bomb on Thanksgiving? So I, I ultimately sat on it. I got a little more on Friday to at least make it a message board thing that like, hey, this is real. And then during college game day, Pete Thamel and everybody else are saying, yes, this is real. They beat Louisville in dramatic fashion. Right. Um, I mean, you know, it was, it, was a day, it was a Saturday in November, so they beat yeah. Louisville. That's what happens every year. <laughs> um, but it was in in that press conference afterwards. He said, "Like this is, you know, like I'm." Ref- I, he refuted it and was like, "I'm not going to talk about it." But the relief, the kind of look in his face, like I, I thought that was Mark Stoops' last game as Kentucky said football coach. I was fully prepared for it to end then. I didn't know if it would happen that night or not. Yeah. And then, you know, I was, I had the story written. I was just waiting for the word to pull the trigger. And it was, I mean, it was, it was in the, it was hanging in the balance. And I don't know, there was definitely some, some pullback from the Texas A&M side. And I think there was also some on the Kentucky side where I, it's one of those things to do it in theory, but then to actually go through it and uh, do I want to leave this or not yeah. for this job? Do I know I'll have the support there that I have here? And I think he knew that he was going to have the support he needed to succeed at Kentucky. Whereas I think it was going to be a lot of politicking. In here's the thing, Mark Stoops, he ain't got a politic in Lexington, Kentucky, right? Like he's got a bourbon company. He's, I mean, it, I mean, he was more popular than John Calipari for a while, which is a wild thing to say. So I, I, I think. You know, it's a finger pointing. You know, all the Texas A&M fans will say we didn't want him. That's why he's not here. But I do think there was a little bit of a, like they were they they both kind of tried it out. They put their feet in the water and they said, you know, this is too cold. Like, yeah, we're just, we're best staying put for now. Does that change? Because we 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 always talk about hot seats and things like that. And Coach Stoops has always been on the opposite end of that spectrum. Like we're talking about one of the most secure jobs. But then, I mean, I thought Calipari was safe, and then yeah, all of a sudden yeah. he's not. So. After everything that happened last year, do you think, like, this isn't a make-or-break season, I don't feel, but no, no. do you feel like that season is right around the corner here? It, I don't I don't know what the – because for the longest time we were just like, well, when Kirk Ferentz retires, he'll go to Iowa. What I find unique is that I believe he's the same age as Bob was when Bob retired. And – Part of the reason Bob retired, their dad died a 
coaching football, right? right? They right. don't want to die on the football field, right? They want to still enjoy their time. Like Stoops, he works his ass off, but he's also at the same time going to just, you know, he he's going to enjoy his time. He's going to spend time on the golf down at his beach house. Like, it, so I kind of feel like we could be angling towards a last ride just based on the roster. If you look down the two deep, Redshirt junior, redshirt junior, redshirt senior, super senior. Like the roster yeah. is set up very well for them to succeed this year. But I don't know if like winning more helps them stay longer or helps them retire quicker. Like I, I don't know. Like you can't crawl into his mind to figure out what the motive is going to be. But there is. I mean, we're on year twelve. Like got coaches just don't coach that long. Yeah, right. So I don't, I don't know what's the the straw that breaks his back one way or the other. But. My like hot take that I'm, I'm, you know, Mike, you gotta try out these hot takes. But there is this sort of, um, yeah, I don't want to say last dance sort of feel to it. But man, things are the schedule notwithstanding, things are teed up well from them from a roster standpoint. He's had Brad White around for a long time. He's had Vince Merrill. Like, there's a lot of guys who've been there for a long time. So, uh, yeah, I, I hate that. I'm like, you know, tiptoeing around this. Yeah. But there is this like uneasy. He's not here. You know that, but it's, right? But it's not a hot seat. Like, He's I don't, not in the pool with Vince over there. <laughs> but I, I, my, to answer your question, I don't think they're running him off anytime soon. Yeah. But I also don't know, like, what is it that makes him want to hang it up, yeah. right? Like, is there another job he actually wants? Because if he was thinking about going to A&M, he was thinking about coaching for five more years. So why wouldn't he do that at Kentucky? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. So maybe, maybe, hell, maybe if he goes eight and four this year and realizes I'm a win away from the playoff, maybe he's like, "Dude, screw it! I'll be here for five more years because I know I can get in the playoff. It's yeah. a new playoff. This is easy, right? <laughs> right Just right. be in the SEC and win nine games, and you're a playoff team. Absolutely. You think Billy Napier is more popular in Gainesville or Lexington? Lexington, without a doubt. <laughs> Some about Billy. He's our favorite Florida football coach. Actually, that is a good question. Who's your favorite Florida football coach? Probably Ron Zook. Okay, that's a good. I like the shark guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the shark guy. Uh, but even though they cheated to beat Kentucky, but it is. You know, like times, any of them. you know how many times? <laughs> well, yeah, because they beat you. <laughs> yeah, they beat up on you. You know how many times I've watched Kentucky beat Florida? Four times in six years. That's awesome, isn't it? Three in a row. Three, Florida, you've lost to Kentucky three years in a row. <laughs> and I, I truly think if, if Napier loses that game, they'll fire him the next day. I, I, I would think that that is. It's in Gainesville. Yeah, it's in Gainesville, and it's later on in the year. So they'll probably they'll do the thing like they did last year where they win a game they shouldn't, like they did against Tennessee, and then they'll, they'll like bow in, and then they'll lose a game to like Kentucky, and then they'll get the torches and pitchforks right, back right. out. So um, that has very much like Coach O getting fired the week or two after Kentucky beat him back in 21. I tell you, we, we talk about Kentucky's schedule, which I think is a little tougher this year than it's been in the past, but that – Week two South Carolina matchup, we've got circled as one, if not the biggest game on the schedule. And it's not that we think South Carolina is just this formidable opponent opponent that's just going to knock them off, but it's like everything that we preached in the offseason and this potentially being the year, it all gets derailed if you lose it's, to the game cox. It is. Uh, look, look at him saying we, Mike. <laughs> he's over here. He's trying to. He's trying to get in our good graces. I'm, yeah. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. That I couldn't go that I far. Just want my I, I, I know I'll I know I couldn't go that. Once I get my product, <laughs> <laughs> I need my fix, man. <laughs> I, it's the biggest game of the year on the schedule. And here's a fun fact that we don't like to talk about in Lexington. Kentucky's two and six in the last two years at home against SEC opponents. Or two and four. Am I doing that right? Two and six. Uh, it's be hot two, out it'd here. Be eight uh, games. We, we yeah, two and six, it. probably. Yeah, uh, that sounds right. Four, four SEC oh, home games, right. two and six. Yeah. SEC home games the last two years. Apologies for butchering that stat. But, so, I mean, they lost to South Carolina and Vandy one year at home. That should be a nine win season. Right. You beat those two teams. And to put the shoe on the other foot, like, when you saw Stoops ascend through the climb the coaching ranks, it was because he beat Missouri, Vanderbilt, and South Carolina. There was a stretch of four years, or five years, excuse me, where Kentucky had three combined losses to all of those teams. You have to beat those opponents. And the other part of this, too, is not, it's tangentially related to Napier. We're like, what if Beamer, I mean, that if they don't win at Kentucky, they, run, they start running out of winnable games, right? Yeah. So, like, 
that's a that game in the Auburn home game. Yeah. Because I mean, if you were to tier the SEC, you put Kentucky and South Carolina and Auburn, you kind of jumble them up together. Yeah, I agree. Kentucky's got both of them at home. You got to take care of business at home if you want to be a seven, eight, nine win team. Right. There's just there's no excuses. And the other part of it too, if you don't beat South Carolina and then you lose to Georgia and then you're just like, oh no, like yeah. this the wheels right. they can start spinning quickly because a, a road trip to go see Lane at Oxford. Yeah. So, and not only that. Kentucky should have one of the best run defense in the in the SEC. I'd put it up there against all of them. Jamin Dumas Johnson, uh, Deion Walker, like they have some big, big run stuffers. Well, Norris Sellers, uh, they they gonna Dow Loggins gonna have him throw it all over the yard in his second start ever? No. Like Kentucky should have this matchup. They should suffocate him. Yeah. You shouldn't have to need to score more than twenty seven points to to win that game comfortably. That has to be a Kentucky win in week two. And it's nationally televised. It's ABC. Yeah. That'll be the first SEC only game on ABC. Have you all have you all worked have you all workshopped? Have we got any musicians here? We need some good SEC <laughs> on ABC music. Yeah, there's a few running around here. It breaks my heart that we're losing the da, 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 da. Well, their logo came out and I was not an I, it's like it's almost like the scheduling of next year's SEC is like did we even? What are we doing here? Did yeah. we lip mark this thing? Did you make that? <laughs> like, I, was like, I mean, seriously, the shield. Like, I, I don't know Photoshop, and I could have made that. You know, like, come on. ESPN spent all their money to get the games. They don't have any left they're, over they're, for graphic done, design. The budget is shot. So. This is a good looking logo, though. Yeah, there you go. Y'all, y'all, are, y'all are, are doing hey, it big. You're doing all right. Well, I mean, if you saw this, the left or right, <laughs> clearly we hit the camera from the other side with our Amazon setup here. But hey, I'm curious to know if, if you thought about this moving away from divisions, if that will help or hurt Kentucky, because you know if you look at the schedule now, instead of let's say uh, I, I don't know, do they play Missouri? It's like Missouri's off of it now. Right, right. Yeah. So but now of course they... Missouri's going to be good this year. But right, you know, you got Ole Miss, you got Texas. These are games that you you. You, you probably wouldn't have had if you were right. still playing just the East. Will that hurt the program, you think, or help it? I think it hurts it in a sense that that game in 2018 where you're playing Georgia to go to Atlanta, right? it's, it's harder just to know, right? Because yeah. there's going to be scenarios flowing out there for a while where, like, this isn't the hard and fast path forward. Um, and the other part of it, too, I mean, you know, like, if we were doing the traditional divisions this year, and let's say Texas is in the East, Oklahoma's in the West. Like, I would pick Ole Miss would be a fun SEC West champion pick, yeah. right? Like, the, the dark horses for East and West would be Ole Miss and Mizzou. You yeah. would just kind of pick yeah. one of them. That'd be a fun take to do. Now, I mean, the fourth best team in the SEC is going to be maybe the number eight team in the country, but it, that's going to feel like a mile away from Atlanta, you know? Yeah. And that, that part of all of this fascinates me in our new – college sports ecosystem where you know like is winning the SEC that's bigger than getting the playoff right but is it better than the champ like I'm, I'm just so fascinated by because I, I hate a conference championship weekend for the longest time because how many uh, good conference championship games were there besides the SEC right. yeah you know Ohio rarely, State scores rarely 60 everyone. against yeah. Iowa, you know, or Pac-12 after dark where there's 100 people at the game and it's a snooze fest. But, like, uh, I'm, I'm curious, like, how much do those stick around? How much do they still matter? I I know for, for Kentucky fans, though, personally, like, it does hurt us because we wanted that game. We wanted to go to Atlanta. And I think us and Vaney are the only teams that haven't gotten there. Yeah. And you know that that sucks. That does now suck. it's it's just it's going to be harder. Well, it's no secret that Kentucky's been against the nine-game SEC schedule, but have you heard the rumors that they may the SEC may be looking at like Carolina and Kansas and, and the other one people throw in is Virginia. I f I feel like that's how you get South Carolina and and Kentucky schools like that in on a nine-game because Kentucky's got a better football program than any of those I just named, and those are three elite basketball programs so it helps the league it, 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 is that the avenue you think to go into nine is to adding no one's going to say this but adding football programs that basically everybody in the SEC is confident can they can beat I do and it, the other thing too do you believe a word Greg Sankey says no yeah I mean like I, I, I it's Greg Sankey's 
it's so yeah. he's on like because I know for some people he's like Darth Vader because he by doing Oklahoma and Texas he kind of killed college athletics to an extent but there, there's part of me that I do feel like he has uh, like he thinks about the unintended consequences yeah. and he isn't going to be just reactionary where it's like well the Big Ten's breaking up the Power 12 so we got to get in on it like right. he's not going to He's not going to be purely reactionary. I think, just generally speaking, they're getting a nine one way or another, and really, it's wholly dependent on how much money they can squeeze out of ESPN for it, and and how quickly does the ACC fall apart? Right? I mean, how long does it take Florida State and Clemson to warrior up and get out of there? I'm not a warrior, so I don't know, but I'm that that's a part of all of this where. I know we're going to get there. I'm glad that Mark Stoops and Mitch Barnhart, they, they pulled all the cards they had to to kind of push it off for as long as possible. And part of it selfishly because I, I grew up in Louisville when Louisville, Kentucky was the biggest right. thing going. You don't want to lose and that like, game. Yeah, and, and it's fun kicking their ass every year. I don't <laughs> want that going away, you know? Like, we get to talk about how the ACC is basically Conference USA, you know? Like, uh, oh, congrats, you got to play in a Conference Championship game and get a backup quarterback. Like, hats off to you, you know? <laughs> Like so, I, I selfishly wanted to stay uh, away. But when I would talk to guys who finished, though, it was after that COVID season. They played ten games, and they loved it. Like, yeah, is there like? I mean, we aren't getting up for Ball State, <laughs> you know? Like they, <laughs> they they enjoy playing the great teams every week. So. But it is going to take, I like guess, going to take us all a long time to adjust to what success is in this league, right? Because like seven and five next year is as good as eight and four, or nine and three We're was, probably right? Top twenty-five, you know, yeah. at seven yeah. and five in the SEC. Yeah, I mean Jesse Simonton from one three, he wrote about it last week. He's like, yeah, you go through the SP plus, and they're they're in the top twenty-five, and that would be like the third best team in the ACC, but they're eighth in the SEC. Yeah. Like it's just. It's going to take everybody's brains a while. And you know who's going to have a really hard time coping with it? Auburn fans. They're going to fire so many coaches for not winning nine games, right? Like, they're going to be wishing they had Gus Malzahn, you know? It's going to be, it's going to be so funny to watch. Well, Nick, I think you gave us enough, more than enough clips there. So, Well, let me give them one last okay. question. Oh, there we go. There we go. So if you could go back to when you were nine years old, what kind of hairstyle would you rock back then? You know, because I didn't realize I was losing mine until it was too late. Yeah. And I was a flat top guy my entire life. But, you know, the mullet thing came out for a while, and I was jealous that I could not at least pull that off once. Is there a hairstyle that you would? All right, that's that's a great question. If anybody knows hair, it's Shane and I. I, I did the flat top. I tried that out. Yeah. I had uh, also my mom, she loved to save money. I was a family of four, you know, so we had uh, four kids. So I once also had what my coaches so lovingly called the cancer patient haircut. <laughs> um, the one that I really wanted that I never could get because it cost more money, it was the bleach top, the Slim Shady. Yes. yes. That, I mean, we're out here at this lovely pool party. I mean, we would look so cool if yeah, we had absolutely. the bleach top. I had sun in, and maybe that's why I'm bald, because I used it. <laughs> you know what I'm so, well, so I had yellow hair for like I, three days. It, it also <laughs> probably infected your brain, right? I mean, let's be real here. Maybe I can add it in with post. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to give you the, the blonde. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thumbnail. There you go, Tennessee yeah. Baines. I'm going to take that one with you. Before you go, tell the audience, how can they follow you? How can they find your work? At uh, Roush KSR on Twitter social media uh kentucky sports radio with the lovely folks here at on three we got tons of great content over on ks board the message board uh uk one's a great promo to try us out for a couple months for only a buck so tons of great content out there appreciate you guys coming on i uh, appreciate you all listen we're gonna have you all on 11 personnel this summer yeah. we love the sec podcast crossover um and yeah appreciate everything you all do thank you thanks you, brother no that was great